Hello everyone, my name's Pete from UK Survival and today I'm going to be giving you a one of my free lessons which I'll be coming out very shortly on how to use a compass. Okay, so this is lesson one, this is compass basics. So what I'm going to be covering on this session is looking at a various different compasses, which I'll come in a bit more detail fairly shortly, but also be covering these seven points which I've got on my board. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand is parts of a compass. Then we'll be looking at our free norse, then looking at the cardinal points, how to set a compass, taking a bearing, setting a map, and also looking at some grid bearings. So they are the seven things which I'm going to cover over the next 10 minutes. So let's take in and let's have a quick look. Okay, so as you see in front of you, you've got four different compasses. There's a whole load of different compasses out there on the market. Um, you can spend £5, you can spend 99p, you can spend 100 or £200 on a compass. It just depends on how much budget you want to put towards a compass and what you want to use the compass for. So in front of us, yeah, we just have a basic compass, which you'll see inside most shops, ranging from different prices. Um, we've got... Yeah, the cheapest now is on the left. Raise up the price, so you're only looking about three quid for that, maybe a fiver for that, about 20 quid for that one, and 35 quid for that one. Most of them you see, um, there's different brands, but the main brand out on the market, which everyone always refers to, is silver. It is um, what I use in the British Army, and what most people actually know when they're talking about compasses. They all do the same thing. They all point towards north in different varies of degree of accuracy. Um, other compasses you get, which I'll put a picture on the screen now, is prismatic compasses, um, which they're more specialist sort of compasses to give you more of an accurate bearing or taking bearings, which we use in the army for identifying targets which we need to deal, deal, deal with. But um, other, we, other people use them for different means as well. But for what you need to do for the DOV and for scouts and things like that, it's just using a basic Roma compass, which we have in front of us. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using my compass, which is just this one here, because this has a few more features than all the rest of them. So if you understand the features of the main compass, um, all the rest of them you can take for granted uh, if they've got them, if they haven't, or if they're not. So it depends on how you want to use them, and which way you want to play with. Okay then, so let's have a quick start looking at this compass and we're going to point out a few different features in the compass which will come more prone as we go through our lessons. And also when I talk about things, you can understand uh, when I say turn the bezel, the magnetic bit, the magnetic pointer, the radical lines, the northern pointer, the direction arrows, you can understand what I'm talking about, not just listen to garbly gook. So the first thing which I always want to refer to people is one of the main things which people always get confused with is there's a little line or hair or little arrow. On my one, we have a glow in the dark indicator. In some compasses, you have arrows. Yeah, so we've got this one over here. We see them. Um, there's a nice big arrow on this compass. We've got on this type of compass, we've got a we've got an arrow just there. Yeah, and I'm um, so. But on my one, I have a little bit of a fluorescent thing and there's a small arrow which is just above this magnifying glass. What this refers to is the directional of travel arrow or directional travel indicator. So the main thing is, is whichever way you want to walk, whichever bearing or direction you're walking, you always want the compass facing that direction. So you always want the compass facing over that direction. Because the compass is facing over there, like that way, and you're trying to walk that way, you're going to get yourself lost. Yeah, so like vice versa. So you always want to make sure that your tip of the compass, little pointer, is always facing the exact way that you're facing. So that's the main thing. The next thing we have down here, this is a magnifying glass. This just allows you to see contour lines or parts of the map, yeah, or symbols, a bit more accuracy, a bit more easy and clear and a bit bigger than trying to squint down onto the compass itself. 
Then we come down here. Yep, yeah, I'll zoom in a little bit now. That's not zoom in. That's we can see we now have a little dial on here. I'll move the campus campus up a little bit. There we go. We have a little dial here. Currently, it's got S at the top, and this is a bezel. So I can turn this around depending on which I need to do, and it has numbers on it. If you notice the numbers, yeah, they go up in increments of 20. And what these are, these are 360 degrees of a circumference of a circle. Yeah, we use the same circumference of a circle in aid us in taking our bearings. And on here as well, we've got a few little markers. We've got N, E, S, and W. And they are the four cardinal points of the compass. So north, east, south, west. An easy way to remember that is never eat shredded wheat. Or, if you're not sure which west and east goes, across the compass it spells the word we as well. So north always at the... We always think north is at the top, but regardless of where we are, yeah, so they are... Make, they're only good if you know the bearing you're walking on or the bearing you are taking. At this point, they mean nothing to one our direction we're actually going. Then inside of the bezel, you can see there are some red lines and some black lines. Yeah, these are graphical lines, which will come in more detail when we actually use setting the map. But every time I turn it, it rotates round. And inside there as well, you can see there's a, a northern indicator yeah, on the bezel, and either side of it has another luminous, and my compass has two more luminous dots. If we look at some other cheaper compasses, I'll just switch that one out. We can see here we've got green, we've got the bezel going all the way around. We've got the indicators on north, east, south and west as well. So when it gets night time, they glow up in the dark, assisting you using the compass. Look at the next one down. And um, this one only has the two on the dots, yeah, because I.e. it's a silver compass, so it's the same as mine, but it's a slightly different colour and slightly smaller. And then you get the really cheap one, which you'll see there's nothing inside there at all. Um, the increments are much more varied. Yeah, they're not as accurate as, um, as we would do, as, as you would see from the more higher end and expensive compasses. Right, underneath there as well, the next thing we have in our compass is our magnetic needle. We'll come in more detail and we'll talk about them in a bit, but this part here, the needle, which is a little N on it, will always point to magnetic north. Yeah, that will come more apparent when we do our next part of the lesson straight after this one. And the bottom end was always pointed to south. So you've got north and south on the needle. These little three, see, these little bits here, now, they are just little rubber bits which allow me to put it on the map and not allow and not move. Okay, so what we have here on the outside of the compass, we have our Roma scales, and these are set to three different maps. So if I'm taking grid references, six-figure grid references or eight-figure grid, well, depends on what I want to do, to make me to accuracy. Um, along the side here, you see we've got naught down to ten, yeah, and this one actually goes to naught to fourteen because it's a little bit wider. But this is for a one to twenty-five thousand map. And that will fit exactly inside a grid reference square, a grid square. So if I get a if I get a sheet map out over here, you can see. Let's try and get a better grid square. Here, yeah, so I can see there that they correspond in the size of a one to twenty-five thousand map. But we'll do that when we get to our next lesson, when we're actually talking about how to use a compass in aid of using a map. The next, the next level down is a 1 to 50,000, and that level there is a 1 to 63,000. So they go a lot smaller. Along the side there, these are centimetres, so a ruler, and it, on my compass, it goes all the way up to 100 mils, or millimetres, or 10 centimetres. On the other side, we've got inches, so we've got 0 to 2 inches on the side, it depends on which scale you want to be using. We've got a little pinpoint marker, so we can put a little cross in the centre and use it as a pointer. And we have our compass, not wrong, and we have our magnifying glass, which we can use as a magnifying glass or you can use it as a fire aid. 
And the last thing we have on a compass is our lanyard, which comes in a lot handy when you're trying to work out distances on a map which are not in a straight line. So they're the main parts of the compass, but today we're concentrating on several parts of it. Yeah, today we're concentrating on a couple of parts of it. We're doing the northern pointer and the bezel and understanding how that actually works. So that is the compass. Okay, I do apologize about the light. I'm hoping I'm going to enhance it when I get home, but um, I left a little bit late to do this today. But the next ones will be a lot brighter. Right, so what we're going to talk about now is the different types of north. We've got three types of north. Yeah, we've got what we know as grid north. So that is the one straight up, yeah, grid north. Then we've got true north, which is slightly off grid north. Yeah, so we've got grid north, true north, and the last one we have is magnetic north. Okay, so they are the three types of north. You've got grid north, which is used for the maps. True north is actually the true northern plane of our planet. And then magnetic north is where all the poles draw together come in and we're, we're to actually draw a magnetic pull inside our country. So if we take, this is our planet. We've got a ball, yeah. I, I don't have a globe with me today. But if we take this, yeah, we all know that if that's the top of our country, oh, top of the country, top of the world, we're on an axis. So we're not actually straight, we're on an axis, and it spins itself on an axis. As it's spinning itself, you've got the equator down in the centre, and it spins itself slightly off centre. True north is actually at the very top of the country. Oh, 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 I don't know why I keep calling it country. True, true north is the very, very top of the world, or slightly off, which is slightly off um, magnetic north. Magnetic north, how that works, is from the equator, yeah, we've got the ozone and all the street, the streamlines and everything, else, um, the atmosphere, make a little, sort of like a half moon sort of thing, and it comes up and over the top. And as they all come together, I'll put some um, pictures on screen now, they all come to what we know as the polar, as, as a magnetic north sort of point. And this is what our red needle of a compass is drawing us towards. So you've got grid north, true north, and magnetic north. The only ones we need to worry about when we're doing using compasses is grid north and magnetic north. And we'll come to more of the grid north and how we use these conjunction when we do our next lesson in, in um, lesson two. We'll come on to those in a bit more detail. But for the basics of the compass, we need to understand that magnetic north section, which is just there, which we're going to look at now. Okay, so we just looked at the magnetic bearings, but one other thing we need to be wary of is the magnetic needle itself. Yes, the, um, the magnetic pull of our country is so, so strong, but if you look at the, comp look at the needle now, yeah, it's now, I've just lifted it up because underneath this board I'm using at the moment is a metal surface. So if I put my compass down, yeah, if I put, you see what happens, I lift it up and it will, if the further I move away from that board, the further it comes down. So it affects it yeah, in some other way. So you've got to be very, very careful when you're using the compass and using the magnetic bearings or setting grid bearings that the surface you're using is not metal or magnetic and you're away from actually a big um, metal source. Ideally, you should be about 50 meters away from a metal source. So I've just used this board here just to give you an example of how it can affect if you're using a table or anything with metal underneath it, which can really, really, yeah, that's nearly 180 degrees off, really affect, that's over 180 degrees off, yeah? So really, really affects the actual compass itself. So I'm going to get a sheet of paper and you'll see the difference. Yeah, just, just moving it around, so look at this, just moving it around, the board really, really interferes with the compass. So you've got to be really, really worry, um, really, really mindful of what you're using the compass on or where you're next to if it's going to affect the compass. Okay, now, so I've just changed the surface. You see now that everywhere I move it, it does not affect the compass whatsoever. So just bear in mind when you actually do use the compass. So what we're going to look at now, we're now going to look at how to set a simple bearing. So if someone has told you that you need to walk on a bearing of 60 
degrees yeah, for a certain distance. Yeah, it could be a 500 meters, could be a 10 meters, could be a kilometer. You don't know what it is at this stage, but if you've been told to walk on a bearing of 60 degrees, you need to know how to set that onto your compass. So the first thing is you need to do is when we get our compass, we've got our bezel around the outside and remember at the very top we said we've got our northern pointer or the direction of travel, not northern pointer, the direction of travel arrow so that is the direction, so when I move my compass around so when I move my compass around that is the direction of which I'll be facing so I need to make sure that the number 60 in the bezel is in line with my direction of travel arrow so I simply do that, I, I turn the compass all the way around until 60 is in line you see underneath this, I've got a black line moving. Now, so there's a black line, let's say stationary. Again, it's glow in the dark. And I move that until the 60, the big line on the 60 isn't dead in line, which is now in line with my direction of travel arrow. So that's nice and simple. So if I hold the compass, the compass is now set to 60 degrees. But it doesn't mean that if I start walking, I'm going to be walking on 60 degrees. Yeah, because, yes, the compass is set, but it's not set magnetically. So what I'll need to do then is orientate my compass around until my red northern pointer sits inside the gradical red line inside there. So here we go. So you can now see now that my northern magnetic arrow is in line with my northern gradical line inside the compass, the Roman lines, and also I'll be walking off that direction. So that is where I'm standing at the moment. That direction there is 60 degrees. So I will need to be place myself here, hold the compass like that, and I'll walk off in that direction. So I'll show you again, but this time we'll set a compass bearing of Let's go 300 degrees. So I'll turn the bezel all around until 300 becomes into the little black line and the directional travel arrow. Here we go. So now I'll then orientate my compass all the way around until my northern magnetic indicator sits inside my radical northern line. You see there, so it's north, north, and now, 300 degrees is off in that direction. So I'll be walking this time off the camera in that direction. So that's nice and simple. Yeah, so we've just learned how to set ourselves an easy bearing and walk off on that direction. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at now is a little bit more tricky because we now need to understand how to take a bearing from an object. So we looked at how to set a bearing we've been given, but this time is we need to be able to understand how we take a bearing. So let's say I'm in the middle of a field like I am at the moment, and I want to find there's something in the distance, i.e. what I've got on here is a, a lamppost, which is just here, and I want to see what bearing that lamppost is from me to the lamppost. So I can then relay that information to someone else so I can say that I'm, I'm standing at this grid reference or I'm standing at this location and at this bearing I can see a lamppost. At this direction I can see a prominent tree. At this direction yeah, I can see another lamppost with a light. Yeah, see, or canoe. Yes, you can understand that even if you don't know where you are on a map at any given time sometimes, or if you are, don't, even if you're outside in the wilderness and you're lost and you don't have a map to hand, that if you stood on a certain place and, uh, and you know roughly where you are, you can say at a certain bearing from here to me to this, to this church or me to this hill, uh, and someone on the end of the phone can get a map out and start plotting these bearings and eventually they can work out where you are. Or it might just be the case of you just want to show someone something at a certain bearing. So for now, so we're going to take a bearing from me, or from where you're standing at the moment, to this actual 
lamppost. The first thing I'll do is take my compass. I will line up my direction of travel arrow with actually the, the coast itself. So I'll hold the compass up, I'll look through the top, yeah, and then I'll lower my compass all the way down into a horizontal plane. So you can now see now that the base of that lamppost is still in line with my compass. I will then take my bezel and I will orientate my bezel around. Yeah, so I'm orientating my bezel around until the northern indicator inside the bezel lines up with the northern pointer. And in doing so, that will give me a bearing of where I am. So let's do that now. Yeah, so I'm still in line, and all I'm going to do now, you know, I'm turning this around until we're actually in line itself. Yeah, so we're still in line, and we're still in line. You can still fairly see, it's slightly off now because I lift it up, it's not horizontal anymore. But we are now in line. I will then read off what it says on the top there. Yeah, so we are at 28 degrees. So if you see on here, it, we've got, it goes up in, in 20s, but after every 10, there's a bigger line, and there's smaller little lines inside there, and each of those increments are 2. So we are at 28 degrees. So I know from the standing position I'm standing at the moment, to me, to that lamppost is 28 degrees. So let's pick something else now and just show you again. So for this time, we are going to use that big tree, which is right down the end. So again, I hold my compass up. I line it up with the, with the base of the object that I'm looking at. I will then rotate my compass bezel around until my northern pointer is in line with the with the with the magnetic arrow I can then read off and I can now see that I am now at 350 degrees from that tree let's do one more so let's do the tree which has got the little speaker on it so again I get my get my northern indicator bring it all the way down to the base of the tree I'll then turn my bezel around. Oh, I'll turn my bezel around if you got that. And I read off. And at this time, you can see that we are at, what does that say there? We are at 282 degrees. So, a very, very handy little device which we use on there. Okay, so so far we have looked at different parts of the compass. We have looked at the three, we've, we've understood the three parts or the three norths inside of things. We've got grid north, true north, and magnetic north, and so we'll cover those in a bit more detail. We've also looked at the cardinal points north, east, south, west, or we'll never eat shredded wheat, or we, depends on which way you want to remember it. And then in between each of those places, so if we're not purely at north and we're not directly at east, in the centre it would be north east. But they are the main sort of points. So if you if you don't have a compass or something and you roughly know where north is, you could say from the direction we need to travel northwest or from southwest. So again, compasses are really good, but sometimes having the natural navigation aids yeah, around all the local knowledge yeah, will help you aid in actual your walking and using the compass. Okay, so the last two things I just want to touch base just in this little introduction is using the compass in conjunction with a map. Yeah, so knowing if, if I want to, if I don't know where I am at any given time, I know if I, hold the, if I hold the map out and I put a compass onto my map itself, I know how to turn or orientate my map yeah, to the northern point. So that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, so which way is north? So at the moment, when we look at our compass, we can see quite clearly that we all now know that the red indicator on our compass points to north. But if you look at the map, it's but if you look at the map itself, we've got some words sort of not facing the right direction. Okay, so we can see a map itself has a series of grid lines. These are these light blue lines which make up the square and each one of these squares on an ordnance survey map or any maps you can get in the UK are one kilometer from one side to the other side. Diagonal 
is one and a half kilometers from one side to the other corner. So just things to bear, bear in mind that it's one kilometer from there to there or there to there, but one and a half kilometers from there to there. So that comes quite important when we do a bit more training as, as the thing comes over. But what we need to use with the compass itself to help us gauge where we're actually going, because if I just put the map, the compass on here, I can do two things. I can give a generalized map itself and turning itself around, or I can be really accurate. These lines, yeah, are what we call grid lines. And remember at the very start of the session, I referred to one of the magnetics, or one of the, the north is grid north. A map is always drawn to north. Yeah, so when you look at a map, the top of the map, so the top of the map up there, is always pointing north when it's sketched. But on true life on the ground, yeah, you could be facing any direction. So at the moment, I can see the direction I'm facing because it's nowhere near north. Yeah, it's, near, it's nearer south than it is actually north. So what I need to do to this map is to orientate the map to, 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 to grid or to magnetic north. The way I do this, I take the compass and I place it to a corner of one of my grid squares. So it sits inside the corner. I will then set my compass to north on the very top to make it a lot easier for myself. Once I've done that, I will then orientate the compass and map all together around until the magnetic northern pointer needle sits inside the grid needle itself. And we see on there. So I zoom in on there for you so you can see. So it's slightly off. So here we go. So and now the map, the compass itself is on a corner of a grid square. The map is now the map always points to grid north, which is north. Now the map is at magnetic north. We can now see now that to us we can now that see to us that all the text is practically upside down. But we now know that if I'm standing at this map, at this point, that anything in front of me is also going to be in front of me on the map. So if I was standing at this crossroads, so if I was standing at this crossroads here, that I know that if I go that way, I'm going to be walking on that road. If I turn left, I'll be walking on that road. If I turn right, I'll be walking on that road. If I go down, I'll be walking on that road. Here, yeah, over to my northeast, of wrong, with a little arrow point, which is down on there. I've got an information little centre, which is just over there, so I know that sort of thing. So it's very, very important that you go around and you understand how to set your map to the to actual the ground. Yeah, cause I've, if you're using the map to the ground, it's looking at the features and matching other features. But if you've got no features around you, or you're in a white out in snow or fog, and you can't actually see any major features to orientate yourself, then putting the compass onto the map, set, setting everything to north, and then turning the map around will be a very, very big help. So it will then help you for safety that you know if you're going to walk in a certain direction, that you're not going to fall off under a cliff yeah, or fall into a river, or if you're in a whiteout, if you completely lost and you know that a road is northeast on your position, because you looked at the map, yeah, you can set yourself to northeast and you can walk out in that, in that direction. So that is very, very important understanding how to orientate yourself to the ground and orientate a map using a compass. Okay, so the last lesson we're going to look at now is taking a grid bearing using a compass to allow us to plot ourselves on a route card yeah, for, ready for when we do hikes, walks or DVs or anything in that such nature. At this stage the map does not need to be orientated to north because we are now using a grid north. Not magnet we know magnetic north if I turn the map around is upside down but when I'm trying to set plans and routes the last thing I want to do is have the map upside down and try to read everything upside down. So I need to be able to do it 
where it's actually a nice comfortable position for myself and you sometimes and it, usually nine times out of ten it is never actually set to north so this is now where the, the, the graphical lines inside the compass become more apparent and the directional travel arrow so let's just take for instance that we are currently oh where should we be where can we see on our map our compass yeah we are at this road junction here and I've been told that I need to go and meet my assessor they're going to be at that pub which is just there but I need to know the rough direction so I know not I'm not going to be walking in the wrong direction yeah sort of like. so the first thing I'll do is because I'll be walking from this crossroads to the pub so I'll lay the edge of my compass from the crossroads to the pub itself yeah, I will then turn my bezel until the graphical lines go north up the map following the grid lines yeah, sometimes it will not line up exactly where it is so you need to move the compass down until yeah, keeping the same line until you can actually find a line a grid line which matches up so I've now got my grid lines are now in line with my graphical lines inside of the compass the compass itself is orientated to the direction of travel in which I'll be walking from from the crossroads to the pub so that's my direction of travel arrow and now all I need to do now is read off on the compass yeah, so that is 28 degrees so I know when I'm at that crossroads if I can't see anything I need to set my compass to 28 degrees and that will then give me the correct bearing I need to walk on so out on the ground I will then orientate my compass all the way around so if I'm at that crossroads yeah, I now know that the, the pub from the crossroads is that direction yeah, so using the skills we really learned about how to put a bearing onto the compass we can now extract a bearing from a map so let's do another one yeah, so this time what we're going to do we are going to go from right, let's have somewhere different on the map see if we have a few more features yeah, so we have a church with a spire which is just here let's zoom in so you can see what I'm on about yeah so we have a church with a spire and we need to go to a swamp farm which is there well, we all know now that using the cardinal knowledge and we know that maps yeah, face north so this is a northern point line over here so we know that roughly this is going to be a easterly direction between the church with a spire and swamp farm but to get a more accurate reading what I'm going to do is lay my compass across that yeah, so I'm going to lay my compass from the church with a spire to actually the farm I'm then going to hold this still I'm going to turn the bezel around until the northern line is the northern until the northern grid line meets up with the radical line inside there I can then read off the bearing I've got and the bearing I've got for this time is eighty six so the bearing I've got this time is eighty six degrees yeah so practically bang on east as we already talked about so we've got that on there but sometimes you've got to be bearing in mind you always take the bearing to and from if the bearing is coming down the map which confuses people quite regularly so if I want to go from this here which is a sawmill and I want to go to the school so I'd lay the compass from the school from the sawmill to the school what a lot of people tend to do by mistake because they naturally think the compass has always got to be pointing up they will take it from the school to the sawmill which is going to give you a complete opposite bearing of 180 degrees out 
So make sure you do go from the place you're going from to the place you're going to. And this stage now, I'll need to turn the bezel around. So north is going up the map. So it's nice and simple. And then I can turn my compass around and I can read it off. It's actually 74 degrees. Yeah, sort of on there. Okay then, so we've just now looked at how to orientate our map using the compass and how to take a grid bearing off the map and place it onto a compass. Late, next lesson, we need to look forward to actually converting the grid bearing onto a magnetic bearing because as we saw from earlier on in the session, I'll put a little back up over here again, over overlay, you'll see that what I didn't point out to you, there's three norths. And those three norths actually are slightly off each other. So you've got grid north is a straight line up, true north is slightly off that, and magnetic north is slightly off that. That's because the, the norths are slightly off each other. Yeah, magnetic north changes every every year or so. So this is where we need to do a little formula on our compass to actually make sure it works, which we'll look at next session. I hope you enjoyed a basic introduction into the compass actually on there. Um, next session, we're going to have a bit more fun about understanding how to use it more advanced and actually doing some more different techniques using the compass. But until then, just remember, it's better to be one with the wilderness than to fight and struggle. Until next time, see you later.